Hello everybody, we are here today to see a, a presentation of a tool called YETI, -E, which stands for York Extensible Testing Infrastructure. Um, the tool itself is a, a random testing tool that can be called on programs written in, in a various uh, number of programming languages. The presentation today is about um, Java programs. So, to give a, a good introduction about that, we have designed a small program which is called First Order Solver. And this um, program has uh, as, a, as a goal to uh, solve AX plus B equals zero. So how does it do that? Basically, what it does is it uh, is a class that uh, has um, uh, two uh, fields, A and B, to store A and B uh, in the equation. And the solution is a double, right? So when we create an instance of that class, we assign the two fields, and we can see uh, that we can also solve the equation um, by using the theoretical uh, result, which is minus b over a. We can also print the solution once we have calculated it, um, and it's a pretty print, so we basically uh, write what is the solution, and we use a utility method to uh, check that there is a backslash n at the end of the string. If there is none, then we add it and return the result. As you can see, we have commented out the main, but it gives you a fairly good idea of uh, how we could uh, use this program. So let's save. Um, we have now uh, saved the program. Yeti does not take um, source code uh, as an input. What it does is to take uh, bytecode. So we compile it. And now we will actually test it, and here is what we what, what are the options. So we it is a Java program. We say that we are testing a Java program. The module that we test is first of all the solver, um, and we will test it for three seconds, and we will print the branch coverage at the end. So what happens is we actually instrument the bytecode with instructions for um, calculating the branch coverage. Uh, on this small program, you can see we reach 100% branch coverage, and we found two bugs here. Uh, so the first bug that we have is a null pointer exception. So if you remember in the util string, uh, we, when we check whether the string that we pass as, a, as an argument has a backslash n at the end or not, we call uh, end with on it, and basically if this, the argument is null, then uh, we will have a bug. Right? Uh, and the other, the other bug we found, and we generate the test case for it as well, um, is uh, when we solve an equation with um, a, which is equal to zero. So here you see that we have v276, which is equal to zero. And when we create v360, we use V276 as A. Uh, so hence when we solve it, we have a division by zero. Now we will simply uh, show a small example of uh, what can be done with uh, the graphical user interface. And we, you can see uh, here that we actually have um, specified that option on the common line, that we have real-time reporting on the values we got. Um, one of the things you can see is that the number of calls is very high and there is an overhead of 5 to 10 percent to take into account for the GUI. Uh, but it's, it's overall very acceptable. The branch coverage is indicated, the number of relevant failures, so unique, uh, is indicated, and the number of viables uh, that we have in the system, so we limit these. these. Um, the faults themselves are reported here. Uh, in this uh, panel, and we also have all the classes that were loaded here uh, uh, and used by the system to create values randomly. And we also have real-time reporting for the, all the methods from uh, first order solver with the number of uh, calls that has been made and it will tip to indicate whether they failed or, or passed. Um, and you can see that for the two bugs we, we found, there's only a very small number of them that failed, but we report the bugs. Um, 
thank you very much for your attention.